Hello, entrepreneurs. Joe DeCharra, CPA, coming to you live from downtown Flushing, New York, for another amazing episode of How to Win at Business. And tonight, we're going after the IRS directly. We're, we're not wasting any time. If you're watching live, people, please give me a hashtag live. If you're watching the replay, give me a hashtag replay because it, it fills my ego uh, knowing that people are actually listening. So thank you for that. And if anything I say resonates with you, if you have a tax question, an accounting question, if you want help trying to find money any way that we can, uh, book a chat with me, go to timewithjoe.com. And also, before I forget, uh, join my mastermind group. It's free. We, we learn a lot. We connect. We have fun. It's on Saturdays at, at 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Uh, so please join. It, it's, you have nothing to lose <laughs> and, and a lot to gain. And also, we had an event coming up on, on June 15th. I put the uh, link in the chat box. So again, that, that's another free event. Uh, it's it's all about finding your your money, your money. We're going to help you find your money because it's yours, okay? It starts with a business, uh, but it ends with you. We want to help you find it and keep it. That's the bottom line. That's my story. I'm sticking with it. And let's get into the training. Hi, Tish. Yes, long time no see. Uh, love you. Love what you're doing. Welcome to, to Haley's team. And let's talk about, you know, I, I've gotten over the years, I can't tell you how many times people ask me for a list of what they can deduct. And I would actually try to create a list. And the list was pretty freaking long. It was too long. It was like never ending because the more I thought about it, the more business deductions I could find. So what is a business deduction? Who defines it? Who polices it? Uh, what's that all about? Because it's really the definition of what a business expense is. And it's written in code section 162A. And, and people, you know, I learned a long time about it. When it comes to marketing, nobody cares about the IRC code section 162A. That probably goes right over your head. And that's fine. That's what I'm here for, to explain this stuff to you. Uh, so, you know, the easiest way to find out is to go to Google, right? So I Googled it. And let me tell you something. It is so discombobulated and misleading that is it is definitely impossible for a lay person to understand exactly what they are allowed to deduct. And that's by design, people. That's by design. You see, the IRS is not here to help us. The IRS is here to police us and make sure that we're paying more than our fair share of freaking taxes. And the truth is that business people get away with murder when it comes to when it comes to taxes. And I don't mean that in a bad way. <laughs> the truth is that business owners are just taking advantage of the laws. They just happen to have more time and resources to know what they're allowed to do and what they're not allowed to do. What's going to get them in trouble? And so that, that's what I'm going to explain to you. So, you know, so I did my Google search. I found a lot of nonsense that made no sense, if that, if that makes sense. <laughs> and so Wikipedia, I said, well, that's a pretty, you know, I think it's independent. I'm not getting the information from the government because the government isn't going to reveal the truth. They're going to give you smoke and mirrors. It's like the big boys club. Okay, that, that's the truth. So what does uh, Wikipedia say about it? So 162A says that a business 
deduction has to be ordinary and necessary for it to be legitimate. So the question becomes what exactly is ordinary and, and necessary as it applies to you and your business? See, it's not a black and white case. It's not that simple. Yeah, obviously going to Staples and buying uh, copy paper is a business deduction. But what about your boat? What about the trips that you make? What about the part of your house that's used for business? Who, who determines whether or not it's a business deduction? Well, the truth is that you decide. You have the right to say, this is ordinary and necessary for my business. And it's as simple as that. And, and I could tell you quite honestly that at the lower levels of the IRS, the audit division of the IRS, they will abuse you. They will bully you. They will disallow deductions because they will say, well, it wasn't ordinary and necessary. And what I do with them is I go to war. I appeal. I go over their heads all the way to the tax court because the tax court is what's going to ultimately determine if the IRS is off is is wrong. See, the IRS is not the law. They're not the law. They don't make the laws. They try to implement them. Okay. And all of their instructions, everything that they give you is confusing. And you have to either be an attorney or a CPA to understand or an enrolled agent to understand what the heck they're talking about. And even if you understand what they're talking about, you need to have the experience of going head to head with them and calling them on, on, on their interpretation of what is ordinary and necessary. Okay. Uh, if it's personal in nature, that that's what they tell you. If it's personal in nature, it's not a deduction. Thank you. I can't write off uh, my family dinner. That's obvious. Okay. Uh, medical procedures, unless I can prove. So if I have a medical procedure and I could prove without a shadow of a doubt that it was ordinary and necessary for me to run my business, I'm taking it. Okay. And the final arbiter of that deduction is going to be the tax court, not an IRS agent. So that that's what we got in our favor. So one of the things so I'm going to show you, uh, so this is one of those bogus IRS, uh, I don't know what they call it, the white paper. They, they try to go into detail about uh, what, what they're trying to say. And if you, if you look at this, I'll, I can paraphrase it for you, but basically they're saying, uh, you know, what I just said, it has to be ordinary and necessary during the taxable year, blah, blah, blah. Uh, no deduction is allowed for personal living or family expenses. So they're basically telling you if it's personal in nature, you can't deduct it. So again, the question becomes, when is it business in nature and not personal? You know, it's not personal, right? It's business. Okay. So they go on to talk about you can't deduct if you have a, a business or a job, right? Let's keep this to a business and you have an office. So your first trip, your trip to the office is considered personal. It's not deductible because what they consider that that is a, a commuting expense. So what they also say here is, where is it? Uh, they go on, it might be further down, but basically they say, however, 
However, once you make that first stop, all the other stops, as long as they're business related, are deductible. Well, what if my first business stop is right next door? And every day I check in with my client who lives next door and we review their books. And then the rest of my stops are all business deductions. And this is the kind of twisted mentality that, that fools people. It, it fools people. And the truth is, if, if you're doing your business right and you have your taxes prepared correctly and everything is you are in compliance, the chances of you getting audited are slim. So you want to be stealth. You want to you want to do things legally, but you also want to fly under the radar. And, and that's another thing. We're going to be covering that in my uh, webinar on, on the 15th. Now, one other thing that, that I found is, and this is public knowledge, and I have a bunch of these, is this is pub, public record. This is the uh, how the IRS trains their auditors to audit you. So if you're going to get audited and you have business deductions, you can know right away what they're going to ask you and what kind of documentation they're going to ask you for and what's, you know, and you don't want to have to go through an appeal. You want to, if you do get audited, you want it to go smoothly. So if, if you're prepared, if you're organized, you'll see what they're going to ask you for. What they want is files, they want records, uh, and, and that that's what they want. They want your books and records. So what are books and records, folks? Because it, that that's what it, it comes down to. And with our uh, CFO package, we help our clients create books and records because in the end, that's, what, that's what's going to protect you. But for a better reason is it's just good business practices. You got to know your numbers. And if you're not doing uh, proper bookkeeping and accounting, there's no way you're going to have a good foundation for, for your business. So books and records in a nutshell, documents tells the story of your business. The more neat and organized it is, the easier it is for people to see that you're running a business. And that's what it comes down to. Everything is deductible unless it's personal in nature. And you saw exactly what the IRS said was personal. If it's for your family, if it's a, <laughs> everything else is deductible. It, it's simple. You draw a line in the sand. And when you look at, your expenses, and you see these are obviously personal, okay? They're obviously personal, so I can't deduct it. If you have any questions about what you can deduct, if this didn't uh, answer your questions, go to timewithjoe.com, and I'd be happy to uh, connect with you and explain in more detail. All right, God bless, over and out, and I will be back again uh, tomorrow with some more interesting facts and, and information. Thank you.